Today, I am going to be discussing an athlete from OU that has been discussed a few times, but there's not a lot of podcasters out there that discusses this particular player. So today, I'm going to give him his flowers. And that person I'm talking about is the legendary Dr. Prentice Gott. Prentice broke the color barrier for Oklahoma football as he was the first black player to play for OU. But before I do that, I am going to bring in Coach Switzer to give us a pep talk. Take it away, Coach. Big Eight Conference. For the last 14 years, we win today. We have won 11 Big Eight Conference championships. Everybody I read in the Southwest Conference, they talk about Texas in the last 10, 12 years, won two Southwest Conference. Houston, three. AM finally won them one in 18 years. People don't know what it is to be champions. Oklahoma invented it. That's right, Coach Switzer. Oklahoma invented it. Well, I'm your host, the legend Mike Wilkerson of Sooner Legends Podcast, and thank you for joining me today as I discuss Prent Prentice, Dr. Prentice Gott, our first black player to break the racial barrier at the University of Oklahoma. But first, you all know the drill. Can I get you to hop down in the comments and tell me why for yes or in for no was Prentice, uh, was he a valuable player to Oklahoma? Did he do great things at Oklahoma? I think he did. But hop down in the comments and tell me what you think. So, Prentice got, he was an Oklahoma native from Oklahoma City. He played at Douglas High School where he was running back. And Prentice not only was the first black player for OU, but he was also, while he was at Douglas High School for the Trojans, he was the first black football player to play in the All-State game. And he was the MVP. Ain't that, ain't that wonderful? Now, Prentice, he played... He played from uh, 1956 to 1959. Now, like I said, he was the first black football player to play at OU football. So coming into OU, Bud Wilkinson, our coach at the time, was pressured into not giving Prentice a scholarship. So some black doctors and pharmacists Gave Prentice money to go to college at OU. So, with after his first year as a freshman, Prentice finally earned a scholarship to play for OU. And the money that was donated to Prentice from said doctors and pharmacists was then redonated to another black student going to the University of Oklahoma and Prentice he was our running back he wore number 38 and let's see I got through all that during Prentice's time at OU now we gotta we gotta remember what time era this is this is the mid to late 50s and from an interview I watched about Prentice, Dr. Gott, I, I'm just going to, from here on out, I'm going to call him Dr. Gott because he earned that PhD. But uh, up until that point, OU was a, a white football team. And Norman was a son downtown which means that the black personnel that was working in the town of Norman 
they had to be out of Norman by sundown, which I think is a stupid law. I'm not going to get into politics about this. Okay. <coughs> so in 1955, our then president, Doc, Dr. Cross, desegregated OU to where black students and black, just the black population could attend Oklahoma football games because I think it, from what I read two years prior, the Supreme court ruled that black players could now go to play at, at a university, whether it be OU or what, but that's the way I read it. Y'all can go back and research it, but that's, that was my interpretation. So Dr. Cross opened up the football games to all races. And he also stated that's what the Supreme Court rule, ruled. So we're going to abide by that rule. So Prentice gets recruited. Now, some stories that, that I heard in the interview while Prentice was here at OU is he got some i'm just for lack of better term re, uh, racial kickback from it during practice they would hit him out of bounds stuff like that well coach wilkinson uh one day heard some of the white players talking about print dr gott behind his back before practice so coach wilkinson comes out on the football field and says all of you go to the locker room undress put your normal clothes on and i'll be in there in a minute so coach wilkinson goes in into the locker room after the team uh dressed back into their street clothes he said if y'all's got if y'all's man enough to talk about this man, meaning Dr. God, if y'all got, if y'all's man enough to talk about this man behind his back, you're going to talk to him to his face. And from the players I want that, that was actually still alive talking about this said coach Wilkinson walked out of the room. And all at once, uh, Dr. God said that, Players started apologizing to him. Uh, got very humbled. I mean, it it, it hit me in my feels because Dr. Gott was actually crying telling this story. So Dr. Gott said he, it made him sad. It made him hurt that his fellow teammates was doing this. Now, now mind you, from what I gathered in that interview, that Oklahoma was having a bad run and the players were looking for a scapegoat, which happened to be Dr. Gott, which I thought was stupid because he was Dr. Gott. I got to meet Dr. Gott at one of the, at the uh, uh, alumni games back when it was the varsity versus the alumni before it was the spring game. And let me tell you this, when I met Dr. God, I met a man, very, very special person, very smart, very educated, very matter of fact, very clear in his speaking. But other than that, he was just a genuine, humble human being that just, his energy gravitated to you. And I'll never forget that one and only meeting with Dr. God. It was phenomenal. But anyway, so the team apologizes to Dr. God. And so we go on, we go on. Oklahoma plays Tulsa in uh, Tulsa, which is nothing more than a road trip. So where the team was supposed to eat when the team walks in to the restaurant, 
one of the major d's etc comes up to dr god and says hey we we got a special place for you to eat which dr god stated that it was downstairs away from the predominantly white patrons in that restaurant and dr god says no i want to eat with my team i've earned my spot on this team and this is where i will I want, they said, well, they can join you downstairs if they like. Dr. Gott said, no, I ain't going to do it. So Dr. Gott walks out. Unbeknownst to everybody else, the whole team said, if y'all's going to treat a member of our team like that, we don't want to eat here either. And the whole team followed suit right behind Dr. Gott and they got back on the bus fascinating and of course dr got he from the videos that i've watched when he was a football player he was pretty spectacular at running the ball i mean he was for a 1950s running back he was pretty pretty darn special now back in those days uh, freshmen weren't allowed to play, so Dr. Gott played on the freshman team. And during this time, Coach Wilkinson, he went up to Prentice and, or Dr. Gott and said, you're not living up to your potential. So from all the talking heads that I watched, they said Dr. Gott got stronger, he got faster, and that next season is when Coach Wilkinson put him on scholarship. And uh, so what all had what what all did Dr. Gott accomplish while he was a football player at Oklahoma, besides being the first person of color to play at OU? Well, he in his junior and senior year, he was a two time big eight all player. And in his senior year, he was uh, named to the academic All-American team. Now, professionally, Dr. Gott played one season for the Cleveland Browns, and he played six years with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, so after, what, happened, what happened to Dr. Gott? after football what what did he do did he go into obscurity did he become her hermit no sir or ma'am he did not after the nfl dr gott coached football at the university of missouri while earning his phd in psychology after he got his degree Dr. Gott uh, started a career in athletics administration, first as an assistant commissioner for the Big Eight Conference, and then as a special assistant to the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference. So we lost Prentice on March 17th of 2005. He had flu-like symptoms which I remember that and I, I cried because of all I've read about Dr. Gott and that one meeting I had with Dr. Gott, it forever stuck in my heart and I just truly admired the man. He was, he was just special. Some other, so in, like I said, he passed away in 05. So Dr. God was posthumously award given the 2005 Outstanding Contribution to Amateur Football awarded by the National Football Foundation and inducted into the National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Fame in 05. Now for his feats in the 1959 Orange Bowl uh, again. 
42, 42-yard touchdown. And after the game was over, which OU won, uh, Dr. Gott was the 1959 Orange Bowl MVP. And then Dr. Gott, Dr. Gott was uh, inducted into the Orange Bowl Hall of Fame in 1986. This is my favorite quote of all time about Dr. Gott. And this comes directly from Coach Bud Wilkinson. Coach Bud Wilkinson stated, my greatest feat at Oklahoma was not the 145 wins or the 47 game winning streak or the three national champions, but rather integrating the football program. And also, OU integrated before Texas did almost a dec decade and a half. Texas didn't integrate until 1970. So that was, that was for, for Bud, Bud to say that. And uh, Prentice's career stats at OU were 1,301 yards on 235 carries and six touchdowns while he is at OU. So in closing, this is from the legend. This is my opinion and my opinion only. I feel that not only did Dr. Gott pave the way for future players of color for our university, but he also paved the way for other universities who weren't integrated at that, at that time. And like I said, he was the most humble person I ever met in my life. Just a joy to be around. I'll never forget forget my 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 meeting with Dr. Prentice God. It was very, very special. So there you have it. I'm I uh wanted to present this video the best way I knew how to without being political, but giving you my feedback on Dr. Prentice God and his accomplishments at OU. And if you like this video, please like it. And if you're new to the channel, please, can I ask you to subscribe? Because I upload a lot of historical content of OU on my channel. And if you don't mind, share the video. Share it to all your social media outlets. And uh, so there you have it. Uh, this is the legend. We'll see you on the backside. God bless and be nice to everybody because tomorrow ain't promised. Check you later.